Blessings, blessings, blessings. Blessings. God bless you. God bless you. All right. God bless you, Lenore. Blessings to you. God bless you, Rosa. God bless you. Blessings. God bless you. God bless you. Michelle, blessings to you. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. When you're ready, say ready. When you're ready, say ready. When you're ready, say ready. Let me get everybody going on Facebook. Make sure you share with at least five people. Make sure you share with at least five people. God bless you. Blessings to you all on Facebook and Periscope. When you're ready, say ready. When, hey, God bless you, my brother Daryl. God bless you. Curtis, blessings. Alan, blessings. Make sure you share with at least five to ten people. Make sure you share. Make sure you share. Make sure you share. God bless you, Larry. God bless you, Nisi. All right, let's go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. One more time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Come on. Good. Blessings. Good. God bless you, Pastor Anderson. Bless you, man of God. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Those of you just coming on, make sure you share. 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 All right, we're about to get started. We're about to get started. All right, let's get started. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 10. Put it up there, Luke 13 and 10. Put it up there, please. Luke 13 and 10. Put it up there, Luke 13 and 10. Luke 13 and 10. Luke 13 and 10. Thank you. Luke 13 and 10. Luke 13 and 10. St. Luke 13 and 10. <coughs> good, good. Luke 13 and 10. Luke 13 and 10. God bless you, Lenore. We're on Facebook, Lenore. If you want to go over there, I see you sharing it. Thank you. Thank you.
Let me share it to some more people real quick. All right, here we go. All right, let's go Luke 13 and 10. Luke 13 and 10. Luke 13 and 10. This morning, uh, if you were on this morning, tap that screen. Let me see. If you were on this morning, tap that screen. Let me see the hearts. Let me see the thumbs up if you were on this morning. Okay. Good. Before we get started, let me know where you are from. Let me know where you're watching from tonight. Let me know where you're watching from tonight. God bless you, co-pastor. Bless you, Pastor Williams. God bless you, Tammy. Coffee, blessings to you and your family. The Lord bless you and keep you. Let me know where you're watching from, South Carolina. You saw the replay, okay. Let me know where you're watching from. I see some from South Carolina, Atlanta, Spartanburg, New York, Ohio. Good. We have them all over. Excellent. Excellent. Florida. Good. 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 Excellent. New York City. Okay, good. Excellent. All right, let me read this scripture to you tonight. Luke chapter 13, verse 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowing together and could in no wise lift herself up. And when he saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. God bless you, Dr. Bryant. And he laid hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which man ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered, the Lord answered. Watch this. The Lord answered. That's powerful. The Lord answered. Okay. This man was going around. He got upset. Thank you. To God be the glory. The Lord answered and said, Thy hypocrite does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox and donkey from the stall and lead him to water him. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, that's powerful, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from the bond on the Sabbath day. Let's talk tonight when the kingdom shows up to church. When the kingdom shows up to church. When the kingdom shows up to church. Let's talk a little bit. Good evening, Cheyenne. Blessings to you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. We are in Luke 13, okay, verse number 10. We want to talk a very familiar passage. We talked on it this morning. Uh, there is a difference between the kingdom and the church. God uses the church, but he wants the church to operate in uh, kingdom principles. Okay. Let me say that again. God wants to use the church and he wants to use the church to operate in kingdom principles. Okay. He wants the church to operate in kingdom principles. Write that down. God wants the church to operate in kingdom principles. He doesn't want us going through the motions he doesn't want us to be stuck in routine. He doesn't want us to be stuck in ritual. God wants the church to operate in kingdom principles. God bless you, Sister Lily. Blessings to you. The Lord bless and keep you, okay? Well, what is the difference? As a member, watch this, 
as a member, okay, as a member, you go through the motions, but as being in the kingdom, you are a citizen of the kingdom, okay? Just going to church makes you a member, but being a part of the kingdom makes you a citizen. Write that down. Just going to church, Daryl, just going to church, Tammy, makes you a member, but being a part of the kingdom, Dr. Bryant, makes you a citizen, okay? And we have to learn how the kingdom operates because you are more than a member. Write that down. You are more than a member. You're more than a member that's a part of a church, Isaiah. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Good evening, Wendy. Blessings to you. We're in Luke chapter 13. Come on, somebody say, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. Come on. You are a citizen of the kingdom. Okay. Lenore, Pastor Anderson, Nisi, Alan, you are a citizen of the kingdom. Pastor Williams, you are a citizen of the kingdom. Good, Isaiah. You are more than a member. Don't let anyone just treat you as a member. Most people look to find a church, and when you join the church, all you do is take up space as a member. You just go to the church on Sunday. Most of the time, you don't even go on Bible study night. You just go on Sunday. But I want to encourage you tonight that you are more than a member. God did not save you. God did not deliver you. God did not set you free so you could go and join a church and just be a member. You are a kingdom of, you are a citizen of the kingdom, okay? Watch this. So Jesus is now teaching in the synagogue, okay? And behold, there's a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Come on, a spirit of infirmity. Good. There's a woman and she has a spirit of infirmity. Good. That's right. Minister Bird, good. Good, Tara. Blessings to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're in Luke chapter number 13, verse 10. If you're in Luke 13 and 10, come on, tap that screen. There are uh, some just coming on. As you come on, make sure you are sharing. Share with at least five people. Make sure you are sharing. God bless you, Kim. Blessings to you. Make sure you share with at least five people. Come on, you are more than a member, Kim. You are a citizen of the kingdom. You are a citizen of the kingdom, okay? You're more than a member. You are a citizen of the kingdom. Remember that. You are a citizen of the kingdom. You are a citizen of the kingdom. Come on. You're more than a member. You are a citizen of the kingdom. Okay, good. Watch this. God bless you, Rambo. All right, so the woman has a spirit of infirmity. Write that down. A spirit of infirmity. Write that down. Write that down. This woman had a spirit of infirmity. I want you to see why this is so important. This woman had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Wendy, that means that her problem was not physical, but her problem was spiritual. Hear me? Lenore, her problem was not physical, but her problem was spiritual. Isaiah, her problem was not physical, her problem was spiritual. Everyone could see what was happening physically, Benita, but they did not see what was happening spiritual. And the reason why 
You want to operate in kingdom principles because the kingdom allows you to walk by faith and not by sight. The kingdom calls you to operate in the spirit and not the flesh. Good evening. God bless you, Sister Vivian. God bless you, Sister Gloria. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Good. 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 Her problem was not physical, but her problem was spiritual. How do you know that, Pastor Bryant? Where do you see that her problem was spiritual? Right there. She had a spirit of infirmity. Okay, a spirit demonic. It was demonic. She was under attack. How do you know that? Because if you read verse number uh, 16, it says, whom Satan has bound for 18 years. So the scripture lets you know this wasn't a physical issue. This was a spiritual issue. She was under attack by a demon assigned to her by Satan. Satan assigned a demon to attack her. I want you to see this. And it manifested in a bent over position. She was under spiritual attack and it manifested in a bent over position. So the bent over position was physical but the attack was spiritual, okay? I want you to see that the spiritual deformity was the result of a demon. The spiritual deformity was a result of a demon. Okay, watch this. If the problem was caused by a demon... It cannot be solved by a doctor. Write those two words down, please. Demon, doctor. Write those two words down, please. Demon slash doctor. Lenore, the problem was caused by a demon, so it cannot be solved by a doctor. The problem, Larry, was caused by a demon. Therefore, it cannot be solved by a doctor. Some people you know have been dealing with issues for years and they keep going to the doctor and instead of things getting better, it's getting worse. The reason why a lot of times because it's not a physical problem, it's a spiritual problem. Let's break it. I said, there you go. It's a spiritual matter. Good. It's not a physical issue. It's a spiritual issue. And when you go to church, most churches that deal with membership don't teach you about authority. They don't teach you about casting out devils. But in the kingdom, the kingdom of God cast out devils. Jesus cast out devils a lot of times. Things that we cancel, Jesus cast out. Let me say that again. Things that we cancel, Brother Larry, Jesus cast out. We're living in a time where people want to cancel everything. Jesus never canceled a person. He cast out the spirit because he knew that the problem was deeper than the physical. You can't cancel a demon. You've got to cast a demon out. My God. You can't cancel. You can't cancel. Cancel. You can't sit down and try to cancel a demon. You got to cast it out. A psychiatrist won't do it. You can sit down all you want, talking, 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 talking. It works if it was physical. The counseling session would work if it's physical, but it's not physical 
It is spiritual. Hear me? It would work if it was physical, but it's not physical. It is spiritual. And even though, <clears throat> notice, nobody recognized this but Jesus. Everybody else thought her problem was physical. Only Jesus recognized that her problem was spiritual. Let me say that again. Only Jesus recognized that her problem was spiritual. Everybody else thought it was natural, Lenore. Everybody else thought it was natural, Tina. Everybody else thought it was natural, Rosa. Dr. Bryant, everybody thought her issue was physical or natural, but Jesus knew it was spiritual. Aisha, he knew it was spiritual. So the next time you deal with someone, the next time you pray with someone, ask the Lord, am I praying for something that is physical or am I praying for something that is spiritual? Because you can be trying to deal with a spiritual issue physically and you're getting nowhere. You're getting nowhere because you're dealing with the symptom. Okay, so watch this. So this woman had a spiritual issue. Jesus tells us a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And then he says, Satan has bound this woman. You got that? God bless you, Robin. Good to have you. Watch this, Dr. Bryant. She was a hostage. Watch this, Dr. Bryant. She was a hostage spiritually, Bonita, before she became a cripple physically. Let me say that again. She was a hostage spiritually before she ever became a cripple physically. Good evening, Renee. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Wendy, she was a hostage spiritually before she became a cripple physically. You need to hear me. I said she was a hostage spiritually before she ever became a cripple physically. What made her cripple physically was something spiritually. Write this down. Come on, somebody say, Pastor Bryant, it makes sense. Good, good, Benita. Come on, somebody say, Pastor Bryant, it makes sense now. Come on, come on, somebody say, Pastor Bryant, it makes sense. Watch this. Write this down. Why do people stay bound so long? Come on, write this down. Why do people stay bound so long? Write that down. Why do people stay bound so long? God bless you. My lovely wife just came in. Why do people stay bound? God bless you all. Hello, hello, hello. My wife says good evening. God bless you, Chaplain Pope. Blessings. Come on. Come on. Tap that screen. Let me see the thumbs up. Let me see the thumbs up. Come on, let me see the thumbs up. Let me see the hearts. Come on. Why do people stay bound so long? Somebody tell me. Why do people stay bound so long? Let me hear your answers. Let me hear your answers, Wendy. Let me hear your answers, Benita. Benita says hello, baby. Hello. Come on, let me hear your answers, Lenore, Rosa. Why do people stay bound so long, Gloria? Why do people stay bound so long, Aisha? Why do people stay bound so long, Vivian? What's your answer, Robin? What's your answer, Cheyenne? Why do people stay bound so long, Michelle? God bless you, Sister Charlene Powers. Love you. God bless you. Please give your husband our love and your family. Come on. Why 
do people stay bound so long? Because probably a spiritual and we're dead. Yeah, my God, because they're going to the wrong person to be here. Good. They do realize, yes, yes, you guys are awesome. They're address, write this down, capital letters. They're addressing the wrong problem. Come on, write it down. They're addressing the wrong problem. Come on, they're addressing the wrong problem. Lord have mercy. I wish I had my bomb squad on tonight. I wish I had my bomb squad. We are, we're in Luke chapter 13, Sister Charlene. Those of you who are coming on, we're in Luke chapter 13, verse 10. Come on. They're addressing the wrong problem. They're addressing the wrong problem. Lenore, people stay bound so long because they're addressing the wrong problem. Minister Bird, they're addressing the effect, but not the cause. Renair, they're addressing the effect, but not the cause. Write those two words down there, Dr. Bryant, effect, cause. Cheyenne, they're dealing with the effect, but they're not getting to the cause. Nisi, they're dealing with the effect. Robin, they're dealing with the effect, but not the cause. God bless you, Suzanne. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. They're dealing with the effect and not the cause. They're dealing with the effect and not the cause. They are addressing the wrong problem. That is why she was able to stay in church for 18 years and not get better. That is why people go to church every week and not get better because they're not dealing with the right issue. They're addressing the wrong issue. They're addressing something physically instead of spiritually. God, good evening, Lashana. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Jesus recognized the real cause. So in order to get to the real solution, you've got to deal with the real cause. Let me say it again. In order to get to the real solution, thank you, Aisha, you've got to deal with the real cause. Well, Pastor Bryant, I hear what you're saying. But how do you know something is demonic? How do you know something is demonic? How can I be sure that what I'm going through is demonic? How can I be sure? Well, let's look at the text. She had been dealing with it, Suzanne, for 18 years. It would not go away. It would not go away, Minister Bird. This wasn't a bad day she was having, Lenore. This would not go away, Wendy. She was dealing with it for 18 long years. And tonight, I come to serve notice on the devil. There are things that we have been dealing with too long. You've been dealing with it too long. You've been dealing with it too long. Some of your family members been dealing with things too long. Is anybody upset like me? Is anybody saying enough is enough? We're going to finally address the real problem. We're going to stop dealing with the effect and we're going to go to the cause. We're going to stop dealing with the symptoms and we're going to get to the root. You've got to get to the root, Tina. You've got to get to the root, Minister Bird. You've got to get to the root, Isaiah. You've got to get to the root, Lashana. You've got to get to the root, Suzanne. Enough is enough. You've got to get to the root, Rosa. You've got to get to the root, Lenore. Hallelujah. Get to the root, Larry. 
It would not go away. God bless you, Minister Linda. It would not go away. What she was dealing with would not go away. She, God bless you, Sister Deborah. Blessings to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Write this verse down, Ephesians 4, 27. Write down Ephesians 4, 27, please. Ephesians 4 and 27. Write this down, please. Ephesians 4, 27. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. And there are times when you give place to the enemy. There are times when you give place to the enemy. God bless you, Blaine. Give no place. You can give place to the enemy through unforgiveness. You can give place to the enemy through bitterness. You can't give the enemy place. And once you give him place, he'll come in and take over. And before you know it, you'll be held hostage by the enemy. The enemy is an expert at holding people hostage. Let me say that again. The devil is an expert at holding people hostage. But I'm glad that we serve a God who specializes in setting people free. Tonight, you may be held hostage. Your family may be held hostage. But we serve a God who specializes in setting people free. The Bible said, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. My God, do I have a witness on Periscope? Do I have a witness on Facebook that we serve a God who specializes in setting people free? Come on, tap that screen. Let me see those hearts. Tap that screen. Let me see those thumbs up. We serve a God who specializes in setting people free. Free. So if you want to be free tonight, all you got to do is make your way to the Lord. My God, if you want to be free tonight, all you got to do is make your way to the Lord. The Bible said, whomsoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right where you are, somebody shout Jesus. Come on, all over Facebook, put up there, Jesus, all over Facebook. Periscope, put up there, Jesus. His name is above every name. At his name, every knee must bow. At his name, every tongue must confess. There is no other name given whereby man can be saved except the name of Jesus. Who do you love? Jesus. Who do you serve? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. My God, if you only knew the power that's in his name. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Bruce. My God, my God. Hallelujah. There's power in his name. Lord have mercy. Power in his name. Right where you are, right where you are. Come on. Make sure you're sharing. Share with at least five people. Share with at least five people. If you're receiving tonight, tap that screen. If you're receiving, tap that screen. If you're being empowered, tap that screen. My God, if you're being strengthened tonight, if you're learning tonight, my God, tap that screen if you're learning my God, if you're learning how to address the right problem, most people's issue is they're addressing the wrong problem. They're dealing with the effect 
and not the cause. Nobody realized what this woman was going through except Jesus. Jesus was the one who realized what she was going through. There you go. My God, yes, he did. He's given us authority in that name. My God. Watch this, verse 12. Come on, put that. I'm learning to address the problem. There you go, good, good. I'm learning every time you teach. Awesome. Put up verse 12. Put up the number 12, Luke 13 and 12. Let's read it. Luke 13 and 12. Let's read it. Watch this, Sister Deborah. And when Jesus saw her, he called to her and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. When Jesus saw her, aren't you glad he saw you? My God. My, it didn't say she saw him, but he saw her, Lashana. He saw her, Wendy. He saw her. Not only did he see her, he called her. My God, Lord have mercy. What did he say? He called her. He said, come to me. Come on. I want you to see something. Write this down. Say, Pastor Bryant, how did she get her breakthrough? Come on, write it down. How did she get her breakthrough? Come on, write it down. How did she get her breakthrough? I want to show you something. Number one, you've got to address the right problem. You cannot attack a spiritual problem in the natural. You cannot address the effect. You've got to go to the root. Thank you, Minister Bird. Thank you, Lashana. How did she get her breakthrough? Watch this, Suzanne. She got her breakthrough, Renea, not because she went to church, Isaiah. She got her breakthrough, Benita, because she went to Jesus. There is a difference than going to church than going to Jesus. She didn't get set free, Dr. Bryant, because she went to church. She got set free because she went to Jesus. It is possible to go to church, Larry, and never encounter Jesus. My God, I don't tell people to go to church. I tell them to encounter Jesus. Jesus didn't say, come unto the church. He said, come unto me. And that's why most people don't get set free. You in church, but you're worse. You're in church, but you still have a bad attitude. It's not going to church. It's going to Jesus. Jesus said, come to me. My God, I came to Jesus as I was, weary, wounded, and sad. I found in him glory. It's about going to Jesus. Thank you for those bombs. My God, those bombs are going off tonight. Thank you. You must go to Jesus. Hallelujah. Stop telling people to go to church. Sometimes they'll turn out worse based on where you send them. There are some places I would never send people. You've got to point them to Jesus. Write that down. Point people to Jesus, not to your church, not to your pastor, not to your bishop, not to the apostle. Point people to Jesus. My God, I must tell Jesus. Good evening, Valerie, Willie, Tempest, Tina, Timber. I must tell Jesus all of my trouble. I cannot bear these burdens alone in my despair. He kindly will help me. My God, you got to point people to Jesus, Dr. Bryant. Whatever you do, Robin, you got to point people to Jesus, Suzanne. You got to let them know, Benita, I can't help you, but I know somebody who can. Glory, we've got to tell people, I can't help you, but I know somebody who can. My God, that I'm going to help you tonight. Stop trying to answer 
everybody's problem. Some of you are trying to be a savior to everybody. You'll never be able to answer everybody's problem. Just let them know, I can't help you, but I know somebody who can. I know how to point people to Jesus. There's a man in the Bible that we don't talk about too much. His name is Andrew. Write down the word Andrew, please. Come on. Lord have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in here tonight. Come on, somebody put the word Andrew up there. Does anybody know who Andrew was in the Bible? Does anybody know who Andrew was in the Bible? Thank you, Wendy. Larry, thank you. Wendy, thank you. Renee, thank you. Minister Bird, does anybody know who Andrew was? There you go, Suzanne. That's right. Anybody know who Andrew was in the Bible? Good, Sister Bruce. Andrew, we talk a lot about Peter. Peter's brother. Good, good. Peter's brother. No, sir. Peter's brother. No, I don't. Good. He, Andrew was Peter's brother. He was Peter's brother. Now, we talk a lot about Andrew, but guess what? When you hear his name in the Bible, Dr. Bryant, Andrew was instrumental, Sister Bruce, in taking Peter to Jesus. Andrew pointed Peter to Jesus. You would never have a Peter if it wasn't for Andrew. You don't hear a lot about Andrew, but he was the one who introduced Peter to Jesus. Many of you would want to be Peter, but I want to be Andrew. I just want to put people to Jesus. I don't want to be known as being a great preacher. I don't want to be known as being a great teacher. I don't want to be known as building a big church. I want to be known Michael was a person who pointed people to Jesus. If he couldn't help you, he would not hurt you. He, all he did all of his life was point people to Jesus. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. That's what Andrew did. Come on. That's right. Point your family to Jesus, not to you. Some of you are hurting your children because you point your children to yourself. You've got to point your children to Jesus. Mom and dad may not always be there, but there is someone who can always be there. His name is Jesus. He is omnipresent. My God, he's everywhere at the same time. And when your kids go off to college, you need to let them know, I've got to get there but God is already there. My God, I got to get in a car. I got to get on a plane, but you need to point them to the Lord. Come on, Facebook, tap that screen. Facebook, let me see. I know you're out there. Come on, tap that screen. Let me see those hearts. Let me see those hearts. Come on, let me see those hearts and those thumbs up. Lord have mercy. Well, Pastor Bryant, how do you know you've been delivered? How do you know you've been delivered or set free? I don't have time tonight. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to talk about the difference between being delivered and set free. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to talk about the difference between being delivered and being set free. They are not the same thing. Most churches tell you to get delivered, but God wants to set you free. Come on. Don't stop at deliverance. Deliverance is a stage, but God wants you free. Come on. Somebody declare that tonight. God wants me free. Don't stop at being delivered, Larry. You've got to be free. Good, Wendy. God wants me free. Free in my mind, free in my soul, free in my body, free in my spirit. 
Good, Isaiah. God wants me free. Good, Minister Bird. God wants you free. Come on. He didn't say if any man be delivered. He said if any man be free, he is free indeed. Whom the Son has set free. Not whom the Son has delivered, but whom the Son has set free. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. 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 Good, good, Robin. Good, Sister Bruce. Good, Benita. Good, Suzanne. Lord have mercy. Jesus said, come to me. Jesus said, come to me. And he called her. Why? Because he's the only one who can deal with demons. He's the only one who has the power to deal with demons. He said, come unto me. Nobody else realized what was going on. Everybody else. Everybody else. Everybody else thought there was something going on physical with her. Only Jesus realized that this was a spiritual issue. Jesus realized this is a demonic attack. This is an assignment from Satan. Satan has done this to this woman. Well, Pastor Bryant, you told us that the woman was set free because she went to Jesus. Jesus was there physically in the building. If I'm going to be set free, how do I get to Jesus? Jesus is not in my living room. Jesus is not where I'm at. How do I get to Jesus? I don't see him physically. This woman was able to go to him because he was where she was physically. That's a good, that's a good question. That's a good observation. Because if you get free by going to Jesus, then that's a good observation. How do I get to Jesus? I'm so glad you asked. Write this scripture, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Let me read that to you. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And then we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to do Colossians chapter 2. And then Ephesians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And having spoiled principalities. Colossians 2, 15 through 17. Colossians 2, 15 through 17. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing, over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you to meet or in drink or in respect of a holy day or new moon or the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Okay, watch this. Colossians 2.15. The Bible teaches us, Benita, that on the cross, Jesus stripped the devil of his authority. Write that down. On the cross, Jesus just didn't die for our sin, Charlene. He stripped the devil of his authority. Sister Bruce, Jesus stripped the devil of his authority when he died on the cross. Dr. Bryant, Jesus not only died for your sins, but on that cross, he stripped the devil of his authority. My God, that's a good place to rejoice right there. My God, he stripped the devil of his authority on the cross. Thank you, Wendy. Come on, let's take a praise break right there. Let's take a praise break right there. Colossians 2.15. Thank you, Tina. My God, that was explosive. Jesus, Colossians 2.15. Jesus made an open show of the devil. He stripped the devil of his authority on the cross. Renair, good. On the cross, good Aisha, he stripped 
the devil of his authority, glory. The devil has no authority over you. My God, Lord have mercy. Okay, Isaiah. My God, thank you. Jesus stripped the devil of his authority on the cross. He disarmed them. That sounds good. Then what's my problem then? How can the enemy still hold us hostage? If that's true, Pastor Bryant, how can the enemy still hold us hostage? God bless you, Evangelist Christo. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Blessings to you, Minister Bruce and your family. All right. Well, Pastor Bryant, you just showed us in Colossians 2 and 15. You showed us that Jesus stripped the devil of his authority. If he stripped the devil, then what's my problem? Why am I being held hostage? Come on, think about it. If God stripped the devil of his authority, Dr. Brian, Suzanne, how can he still hold us hostage? My God. Watch this. Write this down, please. Write this down, authority, write that word down, authority slash permission. Write that word down, authority slash permission. He has no authority. He holds you hostage by your permission. He has no authority, glory, but he holds us hostage by our permission. Lord have mercy. He uses your authority against you. He keeps you ignorant. He keeps you ignorant of your authority. He keeps you ignorant of your rights as a kingdom citizen. So now you give him permission to hold you hostage because he can't hold you hostage, Robin, because he doesn't have the authority. Lord have mercy. He cannot hold you hostage, Benita, because he doesn't have the authority. According to Colossians 2 and 15, Suzanne, Jesus stripped him of his authority. Why do we do that? That's a good question. We do it out of ignorance. We do it out of ignorance. We do it out of self-pity. We do it because we would rather choose to be upset. We do it because we would rather give place to him instead of walk in power, in authority. He uses your authority against you. He uses your authority against you. Do I have a witness tonight who will say no more? Come on. Do I have someone that would say tonight no more? The devil will not use my authority no more. Good. I like that, Wendy. I will walk in authority. Good, good, Minister Bird, no more. Good, Wendy, no more. Good, Larry, no more. My God, no more will the devil hold me hostage. He has no right. He has no authority. Good, Suzanne. Good, Isaiah. He has no right to do it. He has no authority to do it. My God, and if he's doing it, good, Lashana, if he's doing it, it's with your permission. Good, Gloria, come on, hallelujah, come on. When you give up on your children, you are giving him permission. 
When you give up on your loved ones, you are giving him permission. When you give up on yourself, you are giving him permission. When you hold bitterness, when you hold anger, when you hold unforgiveness, you are giving the devil permission to hold you hostage. No longer will you give him permission. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The power of the Holy Ghost is here. The power of the Holy Ghost is here. The power of the Holy Ghost is here. Come on. Hallelujah. The enemy has families fighting. The enemy has spouses fighting. Why? Because he wants you to give up on each other. He doesn't want you to pray for one another. Because he wants you to give him permission, my God, to hold you hostage. When our children are rebellious and they dishonor their parents, they give place to the enemy. God bless you, Shatara. Hallelujah. He has no authority, but he uses our permission. We give him permission by walking contrary to the word. Let's go. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 6. Ephesians 2 and 6. That's okay. You can watch the replay. Thank you for being here. The Lord bless you and keep you. Chaplain Pope, walk in your authority. Ephesians 2 and 6. And have raised us together. Raised us up together to make us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God bless you, Deborah. Good. Come on. Hallelujah. Watch this. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Write that down. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is calling all of the shots in the spiritual realm. Vivian, Jesus is calling all of the shots in the spiritual realm. Lashana, Gloria, Benita, Aisha, Isaiah, Wendy, Shatara, Deborah, Jesus is calling all of the shots in the spiritual realm. My God, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, Glory, the Bible said he is far above all principalities. He is far above, Robin, all principalities. He is far above it. He is far above it, Benita. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Well, Pastor Bryant, what does that have to do with me? I'm so glad you asked. My God, Dr. Bryant, what does that have to do with me? I'm so glad you asked. Charlene, what does that have to do with me? I'm so glad you asked. Because Ephesians chapter 2 lets you know that according to God, you died with Christ. You were raised with Christ. And now you are seated with Christ. Chaplain Pope, God sees you seated with Christ. My God, God sees you seated with Christ. My God, he's made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So to the Father, Benita, you are in Christ. Yes, the bomb squad should be going off. Thank you, Valerie. My God, he sees you in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Wendy. Come on. He sees you in Christ. So guess what, Robin? You don't have to go to Jesus because you are seated in him. My God, you don't have to go to Jesus. You're already in him. You don't have to go to Jesus. You are in him. 
In him you live. In him you move. In him you have your being. You are seated in him. You don't have to get to him. You are already in him. The woman had to go to him, but you are already in him. And you've got to accept everything he has done for you. Hallelujah. There you go. My God, I thank you. God bless you. Tempest, love you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Come on. You are seated in him. Did you read that? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Did you read that? He has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 and 6. Don't you dare forget that verse. Don't you dare forget that verse. Father, we thank you for Valerie sowing tonight into this word. We speak increase, abundance, and favor. Those who will sow, we thank you as they're sowing. In the mighty name of Jesus, a thousand times more. Watch this. Write this down. When Jesus calls her, he says to her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. He says, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. How do you know you're set free? It happens immediately. Did you hear the scripture? It said immediately, Lashana. It said immediately. Immediately she straightened up. Immediately she straightened up. That's how you know you have been set free. It didn't happen progressively, Bonita. It happened immediately. It didn't happen, Dr. Bryant, in increments. It happened immediately. I decree and declare that you're going to see results immediately. Those loved ones who have been bound for years, those people who have been struggling for years, I decree and declare that it's going to happen immediately. The Lord is going to set you free immediately. Write this down as I close. Write this down as I close. Write this down. This is one of the greatest truths I've ever learned, Valerie. This is one of the greatest truths I've ever learned, Dr. Bryant, Glory, Wendy, Aisha, Isaiah, Michelle. This is one of the greatest truths, Lenore, I ever learned. Write this down, please. Tempest, Lashana, Suzanne, Gerald, Daryl. One of the greatest truths I've ever learned, Larry, Nisi. Everything God is going to do, he has already done. Everything, Benita, God is going to do, it's already done. That is the greatest truth you can know, Chaplain Pope, Minister Bird. Everything God is going to do, he's already done it. The reason why we don't have victory, because we thank Vivian that God has to do it. Robin, everything God is going to do, it is already done. Hear me. Everything God is going to do, it is already done. You've got to stop. You've got to stop thinking God has to do it. It's already done. You're already victorious. You're already blessed. Deborah, you're already free. Lashana, everything God is going to do, it's already done. It was done in Christ. Lord have mercy. It was done in Christ. Everything God is going to do, he's already done it. Come on, tap that screen if you receive tonight. Good, Shatara. Everything. Good, Helen. Good evening. Blessings to you. Come on, if you receive the word tonight, tap that screen. If you receive the word tonight, tap that screen. If you were blessed, tap that screen. Come on, if you were encouraged tonight, tap that screen. Come on. If you were empowered tonight, if you learned tonight, tap that screen. Thank you, Glory. Come on, thank you. Thank you. Come on, put up our website, Waiting on the Mac. There you go. 
There you go. It's already done. That's all you're doing. You're waiting on a time for it to be manifested. It's already done. Come on, put up our website, put up the cash app. Those of you who want to give tonight, we always give you an opportunity to sow. Come on, those of you who want to sow, you can just go to our website, www.fhgm.org. That's the website if you want to go there. Thank you, Wendy, for putting that up there. Come on. Somebody said, uh, do you have a cash app? Yes, let me put it up there for you. There's the cash app. There's the website. All right, if you were blessed tonight, put blessed. Thank you, daughter. Thank you, Benita. Thank you. All right, let's do a little review. Let's do a little review tonight. I got a couple of minutes. Faith goes hand in hand with knowing it's already done. Yeah. That's the only way you can know it's already done, by faith. That's the only way you can know it's already done, by faith. That's the only way. Everything concerning your walk with God is by faith. You receive promises by faith. You get saved through faith. You overcome by faith. I can go on. You, you can only fight by faith. Hallelujah. Let's do a little review tonight. Let's do a little review. Anyone want to share something that bless you through our lesson tonight? Something that bless you? Come on. I will no longer give the devil permission. Good, Wendy. Excellent. Something that bless you through the lesson, something you learn. Come on, share it with us. Wendy said, I will no longer give the devil permission. He has no authority. So if he's doing anything, you've given him permission. If, if he's doing anything, you've given him permission because he has no authority to do it. Jesus said, this woman who is a daughter of Abraham, we didn't even get to that part, who is a daughter of Abraham, it is her right to be healed. She has a right to be free. She has a right to be healed. Why? Because of her covenant. You are covenant people. You have a right to walk in freedom, walk in healing, walk in prosperity. Anybody else before we go? I'm seated in Christ. That's right. Yes, you are, Valerie. According to Ephesians 2 and 6, that's how God sees you. He sees you seated in Christ. Come on. Ephesians 2 and 6. Anybody else want to share something that blessed them tonight through the word? Come on. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else before we go? All right. When you're ready, say ready. If, if you don't have anything else, let me pray over you. I'm seated in Christ. Yes. Right hand of the Father. Good. Let me speak a blessing over you then before I go. Thank you for coming uh, tonight. Thank you for showing up tonight at six. Good. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. One more time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I pray that God give you sweet sleep. Come on, sweet sleep. Somebody say sweet sleep. Proverbs 3.24, Proverbs 3 and 24, Proverbs 3 and 24, we're praying that the Lord give you sweet sleep tonight, Proverbs, good Larry, sweet sleep, Proverbs 3.24, Lashana, I'm praying that God give you sweet sleep, Shatara, Benita, Suzanne, Robin, I'm praying that God give you sweet sleep, Vivian, I'm praying that God give you sweet sleep, Dr. Bryant, Cheyenne. I'm praying that God give you sweet sleep, Tempest, Larry, Nisi, Wendy. I receive it. I receive it. Renee, God give you sweet sleep, Evangelist Crystal, Sister Bruce. God give you sweet sleep, Daryl. 
God give you sweet sleep. People of God, glory good. Waiting, expecting great things, God. Yes, yes, awesome, awesome. Aisha, good. Sweet sleep. Come on, receive it, Charlene. Receive it. Sweet sleep according to Proverbs 3.24 for your Gloria. Sweet sleep, Tammy, co-pastor, Lenore, Rosa, Curtis. May God give you sweet sleep tonight. All right, I got to go. Thank you for joining us Sunday morning and Sunday night. You can catch us in the morning, Monday through Friday. We are on Periscope, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Shalom. Shalom to each one of you. Shalom. There is nothing missing, broken over your family, over your marriage, over your children, over your finances. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Sweet sleep to everybody.